want to acknowledge um, Bishop Leme, my Bishop Om Tim Kulu in the house. Hallelujah. Rea le bohan dade. Dile ka obona harabeke la peng. Le mufumadua how I saw you. Um, I think it was yesterday or day before at the house. Thank you so much for your support and the leadership of Koinonia Bible Church. We appreciate you. I'm going to ask that if you are so inclined, the service is being streamed on the Koinonia Bible Church page. So if you would like to share the link with somebody at home that maybe would like to tune in but was not able to come or is in the office, would like to tune in, was not able to come, please free to do so. You can go on Facebook. It's Koinonia Bible Church. And because we are here, just like the page, switch on the notifications. Sunday, it will come in very handy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give Goinonia a round of applause and a, just a applause of appreciation. We are truly grateful. I'm going to reiterate for those of you that just walked in. Um, the house rules are as follows. No chewing gum in the auditorium. If you're going to be having sweets in your mouth, we understand. Please remember the wrapping. Put it in your bag, in your pocket. Or you can take it to the bin outside. If you're drinking water, please make sure that when you leave the auditorium, you take the empty bottle with you, throw it outside in the bin. And if you'd like to use the bathroom, please note, you can turn to your right, my left, use the middle uh, door, and the ushers will direct you accordingly. Hallelujah. 
ha ebe o hloka a tseo tsohle ka kopo hle o tlo kope di ashara ba tla o thusa re sekera la hlela le thofatsi re tse bonete ba hore re hla funitle re sekera la hlela fatsi ke le bohaha holo i'm going to ask um gloria mogele sipo mabaso mulifi litsiki le monica mkonazi to please ascend the stage i'm going to give them an opportunity to speak as the friends of the affected couple obane you know it's amazing when you meet a couple like this like soli and eva you end up not knowing whose friend you actually are um whoever you came with by now you no longer know exactly which side you were on all along um because either way you fall in love with them um saints we are gathered here to strengthen the bambo and the soke family ya robetse mona ke ngwana wa metseleng catherine bambo le father pita madimetsa bambo ba mitsa o stayi father ba mitsa father ka ke re ba mitsa father e ke father ba ile ba nyalwa ke mora wa ntate pule soke le methobeka morongwane soke we are here to stand with them to say we love you to say eva was here and to to raise a memorial that um, she may be asleep but she will never be forgotten because she has left an indelible indelible mark on all of us i'm going to ask that we just take a song and then i'm going to ask the first speaker Gloria Mogele to please come I'm going to give you your 5 minutes followed by Sipoma Baso and Muli Filitsiki and then I'm going to ask Monica Mkonazi to wrap it up for us Be la how ha she imparted foundation on my life she built it as well as osi and akamona ana batla ke tsaga maiki ke le mo foundation ya ka e build we ke eva in a sense ya re she even brought me into the church eva taught me how to pray i did pray but it had no meaning until i met her besides that amongst the, uh, many other things she got me to be welcomed in a family that was together because mine was broken kigeni ka gale la pala ba mbuka ba ngwana bo ha ba ka ba ha ba ka ba mpotsa ho ke ma 
Iba hani kiri kia hesu na han. Hani rutwas kolong ili freide rutani tsuru separi tona rahab. Kitlo ringo bata di bak. Ari ki builbon. Ki habo iba. Kis pende weekend habo iba. Sondari a kiri kia. Kitlo para pasu zaman sa iba. After we were done, or she was done rather building my foundation, she let me go to stand for myself and see what I can do. I took her teachings with, I did, except I still don't like the stage. I why? Because the same thing that happened to her is the same thing that happened to me, and she carried me through it. So it's not fair. It's not fair that she saved my life and then nobody could save hers. I also feel betrayed. Am I allowed to say that? I feel betrayed. Because she was alive. I never thought that I was not why? Why? <laughs> I'm actually very broken. But I appreciate her for what she did for myself. For what she did for me and what she did. I, I, I absolutely understand what everybody is feeling. I understand. And I guess all we can do is rejoice because of the love that she gave us, because of what she made us see. Met us up. Saints, I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Shoo. <laughs> when Eva and I got to know each other, favorite generation back in the days for a good five years, six years, every time they were invited to perform anywhere, they would do one performance for five years, six years. <laughs> and it was... R. Kelly's version of I Believe I Can Fly, the extended version. <laughs> and at the time, Eva Bumasudi Nelibonadi Steri. And I understand why Favorite Generation held on to that for about five years or six years. And of course, after that, we've had so many escapades together, um, got closer, and there's been a lot that we've done together, danced together. One thing that's memorable is one of the days we decided to drive to Cape Town um, with Bo Eva, Bo Jessica, Bo Kiboni. And I remember we, the guys, we rented out the car. And then what we then did is that Needless to say, <laughs> And when we got that side, we had not booked accommodation. And what we would literally do is find a mall in the morning, find a basin, and that's how we would bath. At night, we would then go up uh, Kemp's Bay, find a street that we deemed safe, and we would say, this is where we're sleeping. And of course, we found Jessica there because there was nobody in Atolata, Jessica and Tatem Roti, so. <laughs> So we found Jessica that side, and of course we had fun. 
Um, and years after that, we continued to have further escapades. One other one that's memorable is my friend Soli is very creative. So sometime in 2015, he decides what he's going to propose. And how he was planning on doing it is we're going to go on to North Cliff, by the cliff overlooking Johannesburg because he's creative like that. And we were going to create a canvas and it was going to be a glow-in-the-dark setup. up um, for two days. Um, he and I could not cook, so we served Eva and her friends Roman's pizza. Um, but when we got to the cliff, after not sleeping for two days, chicken feet like guava, guava. <laughs> the sad part is my friend Eva, who <laughs> proposed it's like a dining room. <laughs> because, <laughs> because over the cliff, <laughs> so you could not do it. <laughs> And we had to make up a story, guys, it's getting cold. Let's go back to the house. Let's go back to the house. And Eva proposes okay, to a dining room. But being the person that she was, and she, yo, being the person that she is, she was still humble. She laughed it off, cried. And of course, like everybody has been saying, their marriage has been something that has been a wonder. There, there's one thing, one thing that I've never wanted to do, Lee Eva. Like, I loved Eva, we danced together, we would do all these things together. But there's one thing I never looked forward to doing is playing 30 seconds with Eva. <laughs> Gabriello calls it debate, I call it strike. Eva on a strike. <laughs> and that's the only thing, because uh, if you add Rory Sang into that, then it becomes a war zone. Just over two months back, we landed Go Singapore, and she says to me, My friend, I wanted to sleep at 4 a.m. Next year, we need to do something else because it's um, 4 a.m. And of course, despite uh, the soul and feet, she still danced, she still laughed, she still had a good time. My last conversation with her was towards the end of the year because apart from dancing, apart from driving to Cape Town and trying to help my friend propose, we also have formal conversations. Um, the last conversation that I had with her where we were sitting down on a couch, she was saying to me, we were talking about growth, and she says to me, Chom, you know, I look back and I realize, Hore, I'm not necessarily proud of the Eva we came passing, because what marriage has taught me is that I need to grow. Back then, what I used to do, and I realized me and my friends, we used to live as Christian girls, and we lived in a bubble. So everything needed prayer. But then marriage has taught me that it's not everything that needs prayer. Sometimes you need to work things out. And if I was to take myself back, I would offer more grace to some of the students I was talking to. So I would tell them, hey, Jesus, hell, heaven. But I realize now that I needed to offer them more grace. But over the years, that's what I've learned. That if I'm going to survive Lesoli, I need to offer him as much grace as I need myself and that's the person that she was and she would realize her growth journey Buffo, <laughs> i have no words except to say we are here my house is available my car is available you told me yesterday i'll take him and please don't forget that we are all here for you Thank you. Uh, greetings, saints, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think if there's one thing that uh, Sipo leaves out, Uri, whether in any remote or a spoon or a bottle of water, anything was a mic to Eva. She just held on to everything and sang her heart out. She was just such a lovely and bubbly person, you know. And, it, and it's so strange, Sipo and I were having a conversation earlier and saying it's so strange to speak of her in the past. Um, and it's heartbreaking for all of us, you know. Um, a preacher preaching reads the book of Ezra chapter 7 and, and, and brings out these three points, saying Ezra loved the word, Ezra lived the word, Ezra led in the word. And I think, you know, as I thought of that today, it came to my spirit and it, 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 it just became a clear reflection 
of who Eva was. Eva loved the word. Eva lived through the word and Eva led in the word. And I think that comes as a challenge to all of us who are gathered here today to say, with her passing, what will become of us? We saw her love the word. We saw her live by the word. We saw her lead by the word. May that ignite in us as well. Because I think, you know, it's said that most of the time, it, it is through these times that we get to reflect about life and introspect. And may her life ignite in us something. Her passing just not... For her to be planted in all of our lives and to run because she's living this baiting for us who are red soire today and run by it. Bafosa <laughs> and to the family at large, Khabani, you know, Dafita, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of your life. When I'm at the Amangur, Ikai goodness, if and even in the valley of the shadow of death, goodness and mercy will follow. So to the family at large and to you, Bafosa, I know it's tough. I know we don't see it now. But even in this time, goodness and his mercy will follow. Let's hold on to that, Mchana. There's nothing else to hold on to. You know, the stage we've seen young people grow on the stage today wives and husbands lead us in the world from this stage through the word so let's hold on to that word for it is the life for our lives Eva we love you and we shall forever miss you thank you I greet you all in the most wonderful, exalted name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as I stand here this afternoon, indeed, it is still the most exalted name, even in this situation, even with our hearts battered. We are here to celebrate the life of our beloved Dr. Ivalitabo Sioge. She was a wife, a mother, a daughter, a friend, colleague, and so much more to many of us gathered here today. Um, I think we can all agree that she was a beautiful young woman who loved the Lord. She was loving, she was kind, confident, headstrong, and often very stubborn. But her stubbornness, I always say, was very comical because you knew her, there was no ill intent, Gayona. I remember how we would often argue about who was taller between me and her. And because for some reason she thought she was. And I mean, if you, if, you know. Um, but of course, this was always disproved whenever she had to get into a car that I'd been in. And instead of Eva saying, no, actually, she'd say, this doesn't prove anything to me. This is why city But But uh, And that was our Eva, very headstrong and determined till the very end. I don't think I realized just how headstrong she was until on one occasion, she fought with Solly and I from Winchester to Rosebank, and then from Rosebank to Winchester, and if you want to know what the fight was about, and she was anxious that and she kept telling us we were delaying her, um, but leaving home, so all the way from Winchester to Rosebank, Winchester, Eva, Alemonka, 
and but you'll be happy to know that that argument ended because relatora kitlala and we needed to talk about what would be on the menu for supper so luckily we were able to end that argument Eva had an amazing ability to love each and every one of us just the way we needed to be loved. It didn't matter if you were in a group of 10 or 20, you experienced her as your Eva, who loved you just the way you needed. To Soli Khamane, the Sioke family, the Bambo families, friends, colleagues and neighbors, I know that our faith has been shaken I'm also painfully aware that we sit here dazed and confused. Most of us having nothing to say to God and perhaps not even wanting to hear of God. And these are natural and expected. But I'm here today to say it is that very God who is going to tie up our wounds, who's going to comfort us and wipe our tears. King Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes, in the third chapter, in the opening verse, he reminds us that life, as with creation, has seasons. He writes, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. And these last eight days have been a painful reminder of that cycle of life. So as we sit here today, filled with a multitude of questions, playing out different scenarios of why we shouldn't be here, laying Eva to rest. I hope that we find peace and take courage in the fact that she gave us, each and every one of us, everything. And so we confidently say, even with our hearts shattered, that she emptied herself. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, the Amplified Version, But he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness, my mercy are more than enough. Always available, regardless of the situation. My power, my power, is being perfected and is completed and it shows itself most effectively in your weakness so in our weakness as battered as we all are this is the perfect opportunity for this word to become flesh in our lives and now to do life without the life of the body
Bishop Ntimkulu Realeboha, thank you so much for saying yes to the Lord. Thank you so much for saying yes. We need to, can we give God praise for this vision? Can, can we give God praise for this vision? Uh, when young families can stand and say we grew up here. That day you have impacted generations, Lily. The resource of time, the resource of assets. And it is, it is, it is a testament to what this church has taught. It is a testament to what these families have taught. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Uh, the NLT says, a wise person wins friends. Mephibosheth did not know that his father was friends with David. But he got to find out. Hallelujah. Saints, I'm going to ask this set, these set, um, this last set of speakers to please come on stage as we sing so that we can give them an opportunity. Before we go to the word, Dr. Walter Makoma, thank you that you are ready, my good sir. I'm going to ask the real sisters to please come on stage. Um, the Amazobo Dobo. To also come on stage. Hallelujah. If you knew her, she was radical. She was bold. She was confident. She changed things around. You felt her wherever you went. And uh, I'm a friend of God. If you have been to the night prayers at the Konyane Bible Church, you thanked Bishop for the vision because this is where this started. Bishop Mamuruti, we love you guys, and you know why and where we come from. Our ministry as the Real Sisters started here. It's profound, and it has been going until this day. Sebagaga, Sababagaga, Manje Sebagaga. 
night, pray, night prayers, we would, we would come here, night prayers. We would sing our lungs out. We would sweat. We'd be wet, but we'd go on and on. Because we are the friend of God. Let's go, sister. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you love me? When I call, is it you that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. It's amazing. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me.
Father, to be the glory. Guys, we are radical. Standing in front of you are the real sisters. Um, I don't know if I must introduce or what. I know we have three minutes, and I'm sure we have one minute left by now. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to highlight the radicalness of our sisterhood. We started as friends, now we are sisters, and we are friends of God. Um, with that, I just want to also remind you to be a friend of God. Because what we were doing, Lizli Iba, outside there, it looked radical. But what we knew is that, we knew that, we knew all the time. I will stop there. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What a privilege and an honor to call this lady my sister. What a privilege and an honor to pray with this girl. What a privilege and an honor to share scriptures with Eva. What a privilege and honor it was to speak my heart out and be heard out by Eva. What a privilege and honor just to be a young person radical for Christ influenced by this lady. What a privilege and honor. Thank you, Lord. I am grateful. Um, there was a video going around. I think most of you have seen it where Eva speaks about <clears throat> okay where Eva is speaking about pouring out yourself and leaving a legacy and the legacy that Eva left in my life I remember I was about to get married it was my bridal shower and she said to me friend never stop dreaming never stop dreaming if there's anything you should do is never stop dreaming and that's the legacy that is engraved in my heart and I will carry that. To Soli, Mama Tiny Otsalesa, Baba, Father, Siyoki's family, at Mamiki, at Sengiri, to all of you. Mudima Alejare, may you see grace upon them. I love you. Oh, and Habani. Thank you so much. Observing all protocols, I greet the congregation as well as in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, raising the banner concert. Um, yeah, fundraising, my bad, sorry. And w the one song I remember that we were performing was Mighty Warriors, Lift Your Banner for Jesus. From that day till we now lay her to rest, she's been a mighty warrior, raising her banner for Jesus. One thing, I will, one thing I will always remember about Eva is her authenticity to her name. She was truly Letabo. Wherever she was, she brought Letabo, the atmosphere to the people. She will never allow a person to be sad in her presence. Speaking of mics, speaking of dancing, we will remember Letabo as Letabo. Thank you so much. Greetings, saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I met Eva when I was six years old. Many know that, you know, my upbringing is a bit multicultural. So, you know, my parents are like two whole different race groups. And here I am, a little girl in Sibukeng. You know, people used to call me Lehoa, Josepha, like, because <laughs> I was just like that weird, like, lanky kid with the glasses, and she didn't speak to Sutu, so I mean, like, who is that girl? One day on this wall at the community hall, just, just up the road, you know, there's this girl who started talking to me, and, you know, the more I got to know her, I was just like, I really like you. Like, I really, really like you. Um, and her name was Eva. And Eva just had this way of 
taking someone like me who often feels so awkward out of my mind and into the present. And Eva had that effect on everybody. She'll come to you, ah, why are you so sad? Why are you whatever? Come, let's dance. Then she starts. And you're just like, no, Eva, no. Like, come, come, baby, come. Um, if I had to, the length of my friendship with Eva is about 27 years. So if I had to open those chapters, we'd be here for another 27 years, which I don't want to do. I, as we came up here, I started crying because it was here just after the bash where she kind of let it slip that her little baby was a girl. And we learned that it's a girl right here, down there. And me and Musa were jumping, where's Musa? <laughs> and me and Musa were jumping up and down there. And um, it, it pains my heart that Eva left in this way. But I'm strengthened by the fact that one thing Eva took so much pride in was motherhood. So much so that she would give her life for her daughter. I, I shake at that thought. I, for some reason which I still don't understand, I, I, I just had this feeling to go and see her when she was admitted and I went last Wednesday. When I spoke to Eva, it's like she just wanted to hold on to that little one inside her just that little bit longer. It's like she didn't want that connection to be, she just wanted to hold on that little bit longer until if by any means necessary, the, 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 the other procedures had to be done. I looked at that and I looked at Eva and I just kept quiet. But I, I thank God that in my life, I have known somebody who took motherhood so seriously that she would even compromise herself for her child. I, like, I look at everybody who's a mother and I realize the miracle that giving birth, I realize the miracle of motherhood now. And I know I don't have answers. My heart is sore and I am broken. But I thank God for the example that Eva has been in my life. I thank God for her leadership. I thank God for her friendship. And I thank God for the time that we had with her. I don't know how we will all get through this, but I believe the same God that brought Eva here is the same God that will carry us through this and who will get us to the other side. If we, if we love Eva, if we love her, we need to understand that God gave us a gift. And as angry as we are, we need to thank God for the gift that was Eva. Thank you so much, guys. We appreciate you. I'm going to ask you guys to please come. Let's just encourage them, please. I greet you all, Bazalwane, um, in the name of Jesus Christ this afternoon. Um, standing before you is Abba Zobodo, which is a weird nickname that we had when we were in varsity. I'm shocked, Louis, I remember that. Um, but we um, hopped on the Eva Express uh, around 2009. We met Eva in university. So we are the friends that Sip was talking about that used to pray with her forever in varsity. <laughs> um, I'm just going to read out a letter from all of her friends standing here behind me. Um, none of us ever imagined that we would have to pen down a fellow speech for you, friend. Not at this point in life anyway. It has been the most difficult, confusing, and painful experience.
None of us ever imagined that we would have to pen down a farewell speech for you, friend. Not at this point in life, anyway. It has been the most difficult, confusing, and painful experience. To even accept that you're no longer with us is something we cannot fathom. Hearing that we will no longer be able to see you, to laugh with you, and to hold you broke our hearts. Our hearts were never ready, Ibs. How do we even begin to imagine a life without you? A life without an Eva, our Eva. There's a lot we will miss about you. We will miss your infectious love, your ability to make us all dance, your wise counsel, and always having a word for whatever season we may be going through. We will miss your amazing prayers for us, talking to God like he was your friend, sitting across you over coffee. We will hold on to the memories you have left with us and the gift of friendship we were blessed with. You touched each of us in a special way, always so intentional in your love for us. You never wanted surface level friendships but commanded substance from each of us. You wanted what was best for us in all aspects. We take comfort in knowing that the Lord was with you even in your last moments. You loved the Lord and now you get to be with him every day. And although our hearts ache and yearn for answers we do not have, we thank God that he gifted us the chance to experience you as our sister, our love, and our dearly loved friend. We trust him for this new reality we have to live with daily and for healing for the road that lies ahead. You lived a full life, friend, dreamed big and went after your dreams with such an inspirational passion. We will honor your legacy by doing the same, going confidently and passionately in the direction of our dreams. To have known you was an honor. To have loved and have been loved by you is a privilege we don't take for granted. Rest now, Eva. You have fought the good fight of faith. You have run the race. You have kept the faith, and we know there is a crown of righteousness awaiting you. You will forever be on our hearts, forever loved by us. To Soli and Kabane, our hearts are with you, and we're here for you. To her Bambo and Siyoke families, her friends, colleagues, and everyone who was touched by this angel, may you be comforted. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. Till we meet again, friend. Me mamudi, ke lebo habo holo, le matla. Aka hara ke reke ya lola. Huba ni miksa na hana ka le lila mazati, ke tla ema mona na ki buwa ka iva. E la haba njo tsa o ke tla mire ke lo buwa ke le ka ipo tsa di potu. Ho re juan le ke lo buwa juan ka wanesu. Pele ki buwa tse din ze ngata, ke na safira. Cousin Eva, Emperor Eva, Nikis cousin, Nikil Oswa Hai Amuholo. Oban Onadula, a children are you are my big sister. I'm sorry, Padissa, if I offend you, Munis. You know, Luena Ki Oswa Hau, whatever. Can you kill Oswa Bona? Hoban give a baby, Lona as a demo go to a carabona go fail. O Tata. Ubuaga Eva Mar Kileboha Ntatemu Dimu Kautisa Eva Buplumbarona Ubali Lapa Kikopa Holios and Tree One Kikopa Se Eva Sana Sebat like a Rona Siske Safella Mo Eva Ma Ketelet in Tay Ivana Preacher Larado Pagin on a dû la hache, on a dû le Soli, on a dû le mouchoir à soli. On a dû la holité. Holo, on a bâché Iva. 
Jessica, go fella. Lanzeba, let's have a little bit of 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 a Program Arona. We are almost at the end of our program. Somebody has lost their Wi Fi router. If that is you, please contact me. I've got it with me. I'm going to ask everybody sitting here to please ensure that you've got all your personal belongings next to you, that you don't lose anything, don't leave anything, so that you don't get home only to find that your keys are at church. Uh, the, 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 that's not the kind of kingdom keys we're talking about. So make sure that you take your house keys. Hallelujah. Dr. Muruti, I personally want to thank you for this podium. Clearly, you took my height into consideration, Lemema Muruti. Because otherwise, I'm not sure how many people would be able to see me as I stand here. Um, thank you so much, favored generation. I believe I can fly experts, traveling uh, escapades, guys. Um, you've really demonstrated what friendship look, looks like. And, and friendship is a beautiful thing. I know a lot of people feel like, ah, but yo, they will do things to you. They will betray you. Listen, I have some of the best friends in the world. Friendship comes from God, and we can see it in this. And we become our parents' friends. Um, and our friends become our parents' friends. And, and it's just a cycle, and it keeps going. I'm going to now make way um for muruti to please come and give us a word when i went to um the family home um her father i was tiny uh papa i walked in and rory sang said to me i was, i need a word from god and i understood what she was talking about because when the news came I was sleeping, I was actually sleeping because the news came at half past 11 at night and I was sleeping. And I almost fell only to remember that I was sleeping. I was on a bed. And in the morning, I had no, as they say, and the only place I could think of that makes sense was in the presence of God. The only one that made sense in that moment was Jesus. Because he's the only one that understood what I was going through. And Renali Pipotsotse Fetandi Karabo Emparetse Bayatsbang Tsushi We have more questions than answers but we know the one that holds all answers. I'm going to ask the worship team to please lead us in worship and I'm going to ask every person in this place to just acknowledge the greatness of this God and to bow down and worship him because he is good all by himself and he is God all by himself. Dr. Walter Makoma, as you come on stage, sir, give us a word.
Father, we've come to lift you up, Lord Jesus. We've come to thank you for the life of great Dr. Eva Siog. Thank you, Lord, for the inspiration she was to all of us, Lord. Lord, we want to praise you, Lord, because you put you first, Lord Jesus. We look at her life and, Lord, suddenly we see you, Lord Jesus. That, Lord, you were exalted in her life, Lord Jesus. That every testimony is pointing to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you are our comfort, Lord Jesus. You deserve all praise, Lord, because you lived her life to praise you, Lord. Through her words, her thoughts, her actions. She did all her best to praise you, Lord. That is why even, Lord, as we come together to celebrate her, Lord, we want to lift you up, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that you continue to be a refuge to the family and friends, colleagues, loved ones, Lord. Because she trusted you, Lord. Once again, Lord, we want to trust you, Lord. Lord, I know that, Lord, it's only your word that can comfort us, Lord. Lord, even as I turn to your word in these next few minutes, Lord, think through my mind, speak through my tongue, Lord. I cannot do it, Lord. I'm only a branch. I'm only a vessel, Lord. But, Lord, I pray that, Lord, as I speak your word, your spirit will carry your word into the hearts of your people. And above all that you receive, all the praise in the wonderful and in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd like to greet all the saints, everyone. In the wonderful name of Jesus. But a special greeting to the family. We we'll continue to be praying for you. God will comfort you. Be your refuge, be your strength. And I want to encourage you. The last conversation I had with Dr. Eva. We're having a fellowship. I don't know if Soli would remember this. How she loved the Lord. But she said, I want to serve God in the church. She says, My parents took me to church. I am what I am because they took me to the house of the Lord. And the seven says, I want to do that very same thing for my children. That's what she said. She did all that because she wanted to honor her parents. She said they did the best to raise me up in the house of the Lord. And I want to do that. But also, I also want to acknowledge the spiritual fathers. She loved them. I want to acknowledge Bishop Isaac and Pastor Veronica. I spoke so highly of you, but I also want to acknowledge uh, Pastor Jones. She also served under Pastor Jones and Bishop Jones. She loved you. Saints, this afternoon we've come to celebrate and remember the life of a great daughter, a great sister, a great wife, a great friend a great colleague, a great professional, but above all, a great warrior in the kingdom of God. We've lost a great soldier in the kingdom of Christ. But I want to let you know that this great soldier has been promoted to glory in the presence of Christ. That was our hope. For us, we are left behind with pain. For us who are left behind, we are left with great pain, losing such a great soldier. Tears have been my food day and night. We've all been crying. Many of us here are experiencing a deep sense of grief, a deep sense of sorrow, a deep sense of pain. And then the question is, what do we do when we face this pain? What do we do when we encounter a particular pain that brings confusion, especially when dealing with the death of a loved one? One writer in the book of Psalms said, Lend that the best way to respond to pain 
is prayer. The man was Moses who responded to praying with prayer. If you want to talk, I want to entitle this encouragement, pray as you face your pain. Pray as you face your pain. I know that this may seem obvious because we pray. But for some people, <laughs> when they're going through pain, they usually shun prayer. They shun God. They neglect God. For some people, the last person they want to speak to when they're in pain is God. But Moses, when he was in pain, he prayed to God when he was experiencing the great pain of losing his sister. Moses, according to, some, to, to Numbers chapter 20, he lost his sister Miriam. And in response, he wrote this psalm, Psalm 90. And I want to reflect on this psalm just for a few minutes. I'm going to be brief. Our time has run out. But Moses, after losing his sister, wrote these words in the book of Psalm 90. And I want to read from verse 1 to verse 12. It reads, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born or you brought... Or, were born or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting you are god you turn people back to dust saying return to dust you mortals a thousand years in the sight in your sight are like a day that has just gone by or like a watch in the night yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death they are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning, it springs up new, but by evening, it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is due. But in the midst of all of that, the depravity and brevity of life. The psalmist then would write, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. This woman here knew that it is as if she was numbering her days because she lived so effectively in the presence of God. That's why she became such a wise woman. This psalm was written as a response to an experience of pain. In ancient Israel, crisis brought a response of gathering at the holy place under the worship leaders. There, the community articulated their pain in ardent prayer to God to seek God's help and deliverance in the midst of their pain. Psalm 90 is such a lament from the community that it is a response to the problem of pain and the Israel at that time from a problem of exile. The prayer of Moses contrasts man's frailty with God's sovereignty. It, it contrasts man's weaknesses with God's greatness, with God's eternity. As the writer, writer moans over man's sin and his punishment and prays for a return to divine favor. And he says, even beyond this pain, our God is still greater. Although Psalm 90 reflects over the sad reality of death and destruction, yet it does, have a, it does not have a tone of defeat but rather the recognition that humankind is frail, he's weak, he's sinful, but humankind can turn to God to find eternity. 
Hence, the psalmist makes an invitation to prayer in the midst of pain. The, the first pivotal exercise in facing pain, according to this psalm, is that we make God the center of our lives because He remains God Almighty. And He starts in the first verse, says, From everlasting to everlasting. That's why the psalmist says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations because He's a God who never changes. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Note that the psalm begins by addressing God and praising God as the community's dwelling place for generations. That phrase there, the dwelling place, such a beautiful phrase. It carries the sense of a place where one can hide and find help and refuge and stability in the presence of God. And so he says, for you have been our dwelling place. Maybe you don't know why this happened, but the response should be says, Lord, you can be our dwelling place. We can rest in you. The creator God has given the community refuge throughout the generations. That stability contrasts with the brevity of human life. This poetic imagery is so powerful. Because even amidst the brevity and the depravity of humankind, God remains ultimate. He remains that very refuge, no matter what experience we are facing. This point anchors our hope that our sister, Dr. Eva, is, is that is currently in glory. Because he believed in this God. There is no true living hope than God himself. And this hope, saints, is eternal. Moses in this text recognized that our lives are insubstantial. Our lives are fleeting. Our lives are brief. They are like smoke. Soon we pass away. So God is calling us to find hope in him because he is eternal. He is the everlasting God. One lesson we must learn when dealing with death is that God is the only unchanging, consistent, and stable feature of human life. Everything changes, everything is fleeting, but God remains. Amid the lament or pain of human mortality and the brevity of life, we need to put our confidence in God. Because it is God who is our steadfast hope. This psalm is probably... One of those psalms which introduces the greatness of God in the midst of human frailty, in the midst of human weakness. The pain of death helps us remember how frail and incapacitated we are without God. We all have learned that even in our political, economic, and social systems, that those also, they're not stable. They are inadequate and they cannot provide an eternal home. Only God can provide us an eternal home. That's why the psalmist says he is our dwelling place. Our sister is in the dwelling place of the almighty God. There is no permanence to be found in life on this earth. We all shortly pass away. Nevertheless, in the midst of dealing with the pain of losing a loved one, Moses looked to God because God is the only foundation of everything that lasts. Hence he could say, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Here on this earth, we have no fixed home. We are not going to exist here permanently. That is why the psalmist encourages us, he invites us, says, pray, look to God, even in the midst of your pain. Is God your dwelling place today? Are you trusting in the things of this world? Or is God your refuge? Who are you putting your hope in? Our sister, Dr. Eva, anchored her hope in Christ, in the Almighty God, in that refuge, in that stability. Well, the psalmist also encourages us to put our hope in God because he is our dwelling place toward all generations. As all generations pass away, he remains steadfast amid the depravity and the brevity of this life. This is an everlasting God. He's not changed. 
Moses in verse 3 to 6 turns our attention to the lament and the brevity or the shortness of this life, which was the crisis which led to the writing of this psalm. In verse 3 it says, you turn, pen, you turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, all you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Our lives are like arid climate. In the night, when the rain falls down and causes the grass to become green, and in the morning it springs up, and there is joy as we celebrate the green grass in the morning, but as the day passes by, quickly our lives are scorched by the blazing day sun, and in the night we become like brown. We've been scorched by the sun. We are withered. And so our life come to an end. And so the psalmist is aware of this reality. It is with our lives. Hence he says, you turn people back to dust. But there's hope beyond our human brevity. And that hope is in the eternal God. We cannot depend on anything outside of God. As all of the things of this world are fleeting, so we must fully depend on God. To God, a thousand years are like a day. Even when a life seems long, it soon passes away and we are no more. God invites us to trust him alone because he is the only one that remains forever. And those who trust in him can have that eternal life. Here, as the psalmist continues in verses, he says, Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by the evening it is dry and withered. And as we pass away, we are soon forgotten. But God says, put your hope in me. Because even though you pass from this side of eternity, when you trust me, you continue to be with me in the other side of eternity. That's where our sister is. God invites us to look to him because when we follow him, he saves us from the anger that may fall upon us. Verse 7 says, we are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, our secret sins. In the light of your presence, all our days pass under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 years. Verse 11 says, if only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear within us. What does this teach us? We have to learn and to appreciate the attributes of God. That he remains forever. Verse 7 to 11 are profound statements. Moses has not only set the weaknesses of humankind and the shortness of life against the greatness of the eternal God. But he now tells us of the roots of our mortality. And he says it is sin. But at the same time he knows there is a savior out of that sin. That when we trust in Jesus we can have life in him. We need Jesus Christ to help us live wisely on this earth. In the context of the precarious human life portrayed in the beginning of the psalm, the community now complains that they have been overpowered by God's wrath. God sees the people's sin and the community and encounters the oppression of God's downward, uh, downcast countenance. But verse 9 goes on to say the theme of this thing. It says, we finish our years with a moan. <laughs> Verse 10 measures the length of human life as 70 or 80 years at most. However, those years are full of trouble and woe. They are gone in the blink of an eye. And so this moving portrayal of human life in its brevity leads to a plea for wisdom to be able to reflect on life even and live fully, even live wisely. Let me conclude. Verse 12 says, and then the psalmist then, he turns to prayer. He says, in the midst of the depravity and the brevity of this life, he turns to prayer. He says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. The psalmist teach us that the best way to respond 
to the brevity of the human condition is prayer. Prayer for wisdom when facing pain. Prayer for wisdom during the crisis of the human condition, even as we are faced with death. The failures and the frailties of the human condition must not be seen as an occasion for despair, but rather as an opportunity to respond in prayer. That when we see ourselves reach the end of ourselves, we can turn to God and say, God, you are the everlasting God. You've never changed throughout generations. You've remained faithful throughout all generations. That is why the psalmist in Psalm 116 could say that precious is the death of the righteous in the eyes of the Lord. And I know that our sister is in the presence of the Lord because God himself says precious is the death of the saints in the eyes of the Lord. Prayer for wisdom when facing pain the failures and frailties of the human condition, therefore, must be occasions to lead us back to God. Even when we don't understand, but He knows because He is omniscient. The heart is the seat of wisdom. That's why it says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. A wise heart will bring discernment in dealing with the frailty of life, confronting people and communities. In this short life, may God teach us to number our days that we may live wisely. May God teach us to number our days that we may live for him. And the best way to live wisely is living for the Lord himself who is the everlasting. As the Bible later on says that Christ is that very wisdom, is the fullness of the wisdom of God. Our sister Dr. Eva knew this. She lived her life wisely under the guidance of Jesus Christ. Wisdom is found in no one else but in Jesus Christ. This is how we can count for God. Dr. Eva's life counted for God. When you come to this time of your life, will your life have counted for God? The wisdom here is not so much about technique or skill or even information or control. It is rather the ability to acknowledge the creator, to acknowledge the creator's decisive impact on life and so to relinquish life to the creator. It is not unusual for Lament Psalms to include, therefore, the teaching on wisdom. And what is the wisdom we find here? It says, because our God is everlasting, we can rest on him, even as we face our pain. My encouragement to you is that even as you face your pain, pray. Ancient Israel's experience of exile brought a focus on that dimension of life. Psalm 90, therefore, takes a full view of life including human frailty, divine wrath, and ultimately a plea for divine grace. Its hope is to descend the significance of the days humans receive and for divine benevolence in the midst of those days. God is eternal. Human life is short, but God is eternal. Human life is short. The days which we have here on earth are a gift from God. Let us live them wisely in these days. And the best way to do that as the worship team comes up is to surrender everything unto him. This is what she did. What's her testimony? She surrendered everything unto the Lord. Spirit, soul, and body. Family, you've seen her. Her testimony will continue as we continue to celebrate that great life. The center of the psalm is the prayer that God will not overlook human uh, depravity or human brevity, but bring mercy to the congregation consisting of short-lived people. Yahweh, our creator, Yahweh, our redeemer, is the one who can provide the hope for renewal in a time that's characterized by distress. And one musician says, our response to God is to surrender all. We give you all spirit, soul, and body. We can do that today. In testimony, in celebration of this great life. We can praise the Lord and, and, and surrender our life back to, to 
God again and say, in remembrance of this great life, we can say, Lord, again, to take my spirit, my soul, my body, and let it all work for you, like Dr. Eva Sioka did. Can we finish with that song? Mele Belu Limoya, as the MC comes back. May this be your prayer in the midst of your pain. May this be your prayer in the midst of your pain. You can say, God, even in the midst of the brevity of this life, I want to live for you because Dr. Eva Sioke lived for you. She was an example. I had the privilege of being a youth pastor serving alongside her. I saw that. You saw that. We can do that as we stand Mili Biluli Mo Ya Butu Kau Fela Ki worship him just so we're in a walker Thank you for the great word. Thank you for the great message. Look at your hands. Look at your hands. Look at your feet. Look at your body. Do you have any control as to how these things work? Did you choose how yours should look like? One day they, bring, they brought a coin to Jesus. They said to him, should we pay the levy or not? Jesus says to them, what do you see on there? They say, we see Caesar. He says, okay, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But give to God what belongs to God. You did not make yourself. You did not create yourself. Your creation and your presence is a miracle of divinity. It's God who has given you the favor that as we say farewell to Dr. Eva, you are still alive. For what? 
you've been going to the graveyards in and out burying others you are still alive for what the songwriter says mele pelu limoya butu baka ka ufela from head to toe i I give it, it doesn't belong to me. I don't even know how it works. I'm bringing it back to the one who gave it. Teach us to number our days. Briefly, we are celebrating two lives here. Dr. Eva. 33 she finished she went to the highest in her studies she served God to the fullest she honored her parents she became a pride of her community in 33 years she shut it down it was done it is finished there's nothing more to add she had a, a she had a beautiful husband they enjoyed life together. In the last days of their lives, they traveled the world. And she came back to rest. 33 years. Inside her, she carried a little one. I may not know how old, but it was an early delivery. She was just six months about. Yeah, about six months. She came. And quickly said, hi, 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 hi. And then she went back to the God who created her. The number of your days here don't depend on you. A fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And he lives the way he wants to live. He thinks life is about him. Teach us to number our days. That we may live them in wisdom. How are you living your life? How are you living your life? How many days, how many months, how many years do you still have? Living like there's no God? Here is wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. She discovered that. She lived for God. And she left with a big smile. Mama, we, we, we asked, how did she look when she lay there? Mama said she looked so beautiful. The thing we fear most, it did not scare her. The thing we are afraid of most, it did not scare her. She lay there peacefully because she followed the Lord. I don't want you to leave this service and just say, Nekile ko memorialingia Dr. Eva. Yo, it was good. Oh, they were singing. Oh, what a service. The question is, when you sleep, what shall be said? My heart is crying for you to make a decision today. Mele pelo ne moya butubaka ka ofela ke unela tu. I want to pray with somebody here now in this memorial service who says bishop i have lived as though i control time i have lived as though i am the king i have lived as though i have maybe many years to live but today i realize anytime i can be called home and i don't know if i'm ready for my savior but today, I want to commit my life. With what I'm left with, I want to commit my life to this King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Every head bowed, please. Every head bowed, please. Mamela, it's about you, it's not about us. Today, you can make a decision that can please God. And thereafter, spend the rest of your days in the shadow of the Almighty. Listen, if you are here and you know that you have not been living right, but you want to change that today, I want to pray with you. God is here to see you change your life. Even if it's you alone, today is your day. Tonight is your night. 
in actual fact the devil is very afraid of the decision you are about to do right now but if you are here you say man of god i want to change my life i want to receive jesus i want to turn a new page please just lift up your hand where you are i would love to pray with you are you there are you there it's about you it's not about me it's about you it's about you it's about you. Don't look at the person next to you. They might have made that decision a long time ago. Today, it's about you. So if you have lifted up your hand, would you mind, please, as they sing this song softly, just to come and be with me here in the front. I would love to pray with you. I would love to pray for you. Please just come. God bless you. That's right. Keep coming. Keep coming. Satsile Satshabile, Bani Hela Umre. Satsile Satshabile, Matela Ujes. Sasile sa thabile etsa qeto ke le satsile ha o le pakis that's right keep coming that's right keep coming where are the men where are the men come 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 you need jesus just come please just come please let's push it that day that's right, keep coming, God bless you. That's right, keep coming please, keep coming. Somebody has already come forward, you can come as well. Eh? spirit I need to do this I feel I need to do this I have to pull somebody into the kingdom today you, you are standing between life and death and you don't even know it Twas I was in Bupilong one day standing at the gate of the church and a young man passed and I said to him come into the church he said Papa I, I held him by the hand there was actually a tussle there was actually a tussle I was pulling him to come into the church I said come into the church he said I said young man come in he said I had to let go went into the church we had a service when we said grace and went out of the service, people were gathered just a few steps away from the church. People were gathered. The same young man I was trying to pull to Jesus was lying there dead with a stab wound on his heart. memorial service. I'm about to pray. Your heart is Because you know that God is talking to you. I want to give you that opportunity. Somebody has already stepped forward. Yours is just to pick up your two feet. You are not running anywhere else. You are running to God. But if you don't come, you have run away from God. Go. Go. On the day of Eva's memorial, God touched my heart. A 
I'm going to ask you to lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. I'm going to ask you to follow me in these words of prayer. This is just to help you to come in God's presence. Say with me, dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Today. Today. My heart. My heart. Is pricked. Is pricked. I realize I realize I need God. I need God. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. All my sins. All my sins. I accept you, Jesus. I accept you, Jesus. I believe you died for me. I believe you died for me. You shed your blood. You shed your blood. For my sins. For my sins. In you. In you. There is eternal life. There is eternal life. There is forgiveness. There is forgiveness. There's kingdom citizenship. There is kingdom citizenship. I receive that. I receive that. In your name. In your name. You live forever. You live forever. Lead me now. Lead me now. In my new life. In my new life. With you. With you. I thank you. I thank for you. For saving my life. For saving my life. Lead me. Lead me. I'll save you. I'll save you. From today. From today. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you know each one here by name. You know what they have been through. You know every circumstance in their life. I pray that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords shall dwell in their hearts from today and that they'll never leave your presence. They will save you until the last moment of their lives. I thank you in this regard in Jesus name. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Okay, in this, in this few minutes, I'm just going to ask you to join uh, Mewarona Pinky. She's just going to share a few, few, th few ideas with you and just to tell you what to do from here on, all right? It's not going to be long. It's just going to be short and brief. So I'm going to ask you to follow her, please. Yeah, just follow her. That's right. Just follow her. God bless them. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated, saints. I'm just going to um, give you the last announcements and then I'm going to dismiss the service. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Hallelujah. A few announcements. Thank you so much to Bishop. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Makoma, thank you so much. Pray as you face your pain message. Um, please note that before we all leave, I'm going to ask that, before everybody stands up to go, I'm going to ask that um, the bishop, the pastors, and the family will please follow the pastors through that, in that direction, please, so that they can be led um, on their way out. So I'm going to ask Mama Tainile Father, Ndate Pule, Soli Mamiki Karabo Moki Habane, Natasha Palesa to please use that door um, as you go and everybody that is um, associated with the people that I have mentioned. The second thing is that somebody has lost their car keys. I'm going to ask that if you see car keys lying around and you don't know who they belong to, they don't seem to have their owner. Um, if, those, if you see keys that have lost their owner, please bring them to the stage um, so that we can make them available to the person that has lost their keys. Sunday service, uh, Saturday service is going to be as follows. You will see the posters will be online. Many of us will post them on social media, so if you need to refer back, Feel free to find the page of somebody that you know that will probably have it. Um, and if you do have it on WhatsApp, please share it with whoever will need this information. The funeral service in loving memory of Dr. Eva Sioke and baby Gano will be on the 21st of January, 2023. The service will be right here at Goinonia Bible Church, Sibukeng Zone 14. And the service will start at 8 a.m. until half past 11. And further instructions will be shared from that point. The doctors and medical practitioners are asked to join in 
in honoring Eva by wearing their scrubs and white coats. Please note that there is a memorial book outside, just outside the entrance to my left, your right, through there, uh, through the middle door. You are asked to please leave your last heartfelt messages to our beloved Dr. Eva Letabo Sioke. And if you don't get the opportunity to do so today, such an opportunity will be afforded you during the funeral service back here on Saturday. But please note that um, the numbers might swell beyond the numbers that are here today. So it might just be a good idea to do it today. Saints, um, we have come to the end of the service. Thank you so much for your patience with me. I, I appreciate how you have received me. Thank you so much to the Sioke and the Bambo family for trusting me with this task uh, that I be allowed to offer what the Lord has given to me at this level. And I want to appreciate the worship team, appreciate the ushers, the friends, and everybody that was here. And I want to appreciate all the messages that have been pouring in, everybody that has been sending messages. I've watched people show up at the house, at the, diff at the two houses, Zone 6, Silica Monahabo, Eva bringing, the kuku bringing, the, the groceries bringing, uh, the offerings. We really appreciate it. We see that we are not alone. We thank you for the love. We appreciate the prayers. Please continue to hold us up in prayer. My last words are this. We have spoken about emotions of pain, of loss. I want to talk to the emotion of anger. And I want to say for those that are feeling the injustice of why we are gathered here. There is a scripture in the book of Revelations, chapter 20, verse 13 to 14. And it reads as follows. The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead, and all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. I want to say to those that are angry, direct your anger to the right place. And hold on to the scripture. Even as you look at the grave on Saturday, tell the grave, your day is coming. Saints of God, let us stand. As I had the fortune of opening the service, let us pray as I close. Father, we are grateful for all that you have done. We continue to mourn and cry. But because of the salvation of these, we know there's rejoicing in heaven. Because Eva is with you and baby Gano, we know that there's rejoicing in heaven. Father, we say thank you for your kindness. As we each travel to our different uh, destinations, we pray for traveling mercies upon your people. Surround each and every one of these, your people, with your favor as with a shield. And we declare even tonight that no weapon formed against them will prosper. Father, as we go home with our heavy hearts, we thank you that the Holy Spirit is with us. That he speaks to us, strengthening us. That we will walk this last journey with Eva until we complete it. And all of this will be to the glory of your name. We say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Saints, I'm going to ask that the pastors and the family please go to my right. They will proceed to their left and they will be led as to which way they will go. 
And I'm going to ask that if you find those keys that have lost their owner, please give them mobility and bring them to me so that we can ensure that the owner is able to drive back home, travel safe, even in this situation, make a new friend. We will see each other again on Saturday.